Hey everybody, so today I want to show you how to make really big and wide uh, cinematic vocals. So there is several elements to this, of course, but I'm going to show you the different steps and focus on a specific one that I think is often forgotten, but very important. So say you got like a normal kind of mono recording of a vocal, right? So something like this. And it sounds good, but a bit dry. Uh, it's, it's cleaned up, it's compressed, it's EQ'd properly but you just want to get some spaciousness, right? Now, of course, the first thing you're going to think about is reverb. Uh, in a track like this, you want to have reverb, of course. So maybe you're going to put reverb. turn it up a bit so you can hear. So yeah, it's better. There is more stereoness to it. Uh, also, you can use a ping-pong delay. So here, I'm just using it here, actually. So it's a bit of a special effect, yeah. But you can't use that all the time. Uh, you could use one all the time, but you know, it still wouldn't feel as wide as possible. Uh, so to really widen the vocal properly, uh, in my opinion, you need to use something that will widen the vocal all the time at the source. Because all these effects, right, the delays, uh, delay throws, um, the reverbs, it's not 100% wet, you know, it's just like uh, something you add to the original signal. But the original signal is still the same, it's like a mono, compressed and EQ signal, right, if you do it properly. It's, it's just like a, a, just a, you know, I have some compression, some EQ, and uh, that's good. But even though you're adding this reverb, this reverb on top, you're adding these extra delays and you might use different things, it's still a mono signal, right? So let me just mute the reverb and the, the delay for a sec so you can just focus on the... So the trick is that you need to take this source, this dry kind of sound, and you need to widen it all the time, you know? You need to widen the dry signal all the time. So just forget about the sends and just focus on the, on the main signal. And the trick is to use some kind of chorusing or doubler effect. So what this does is that it copies the signal and creates other voices which are going to be hard panned left and right. So you can use uh, differences in timing like this or differences in tuning sometimes. Uh, so the idea is that basically it's, it's very close to the main voice, you know, the main voice is just without these voices. But it has a very slight delay. So for example, if we just listen to the left voice, it's the exact same signal except it's pan I mean except it's delayed uh, a few milliseconds and it's panned to the left as you can see. And and the right one. Of course it's quieter than the source, right? Because it's otherwise it would be too obvious. Uh, and it's it's uh, delayed even more, so you have like uh, two doubles basically coming at slightly different times after the source. If you want to go further, you can also detune, for example, the, the left one, 10, <coughs> and the, the right one, minus 10 uh, cents. Like, of course, if you go too far, <laughs> it's going to be weird, right? But anyway, the, the, the goal basically is to create some difference. And this is kind of the definition of a stereo signal. A stereo signal is a signal that is not identical in the left and the right ear. So anyway, you can create difference, you instantly create some stereo separation. And that's why just adding a bit of timing creates a uh, stereo separation. Now, of course, uh, if you put the effect too strong, you might have some ugly phasing and just a weird kind of bathroomy width, uh, weird sound. Right, it becomes a bit phasey because now you're, you're having some phasing issues because you have the same signal just slightly delayed. So you could get some phase issues if you go too far. But if you're kind of reasonable with the settings, so minus eight, uh, for example, it's quite reasonable. It's going to be subtle and not sound weird. And it's going to add some permanent depth to the sound even before you send to other effects. And it's really the chaining of this and into the reverb and into other things, but mainly the, the doubler into the reverb that really creates this wide uh, sound. So it's subtle, but in the mix, you will notice that it's a lot more integrated. So with 
without it, it just sounds close and dead and almost like it's, it's not part of the song. So guys, uh, that's about it. I hope you liked the video and uh, see ya.